Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And that's Jesus saying that. Sounds awfully familiar. Maybe a little bit like, be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. It's the word of God coming through Moses. Perfection. Not a minus. Not 99% out of 100. Perfect. 100%. All the way. Not a shade, not a shimmer, not a jot or tittle. Holiness, righteousness, goodness, perfection. Christ himself commands it. As God is perfectly good. As he is fully holy. As he is righteous, <coughs> therefore, be the same, holy, righteous, perfect. And I'm no good at it. I have messed up today already, I promise. Every day I do, I would. Be prepared to wager that you do as well. How might we possibly stand when the standard is perfection? How might we possibly stand straight and tall when we are called to a holiness that we can never manage to achieve? Well, believe it or not, the normal service that we do every Sunday, and even though it's on PowerPoint, straight out of the prayer book, straight out of Holy Eucharist, right to beginning on page 355. Except, right to doesn't actually begin on page 355. We always start there, but there's an optional beginning to right to, referred to as the penitential order, that says on certain occasions, you don't start at, let's be God, Father, you start someplace else. Where would you start? Here. <coughs> Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who has brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not cut anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord have mercy. That is where the service starts when we do the whole thing. The Decalogue. The Ten Commandments. Before we come to stand in praise, we first approach in humility. I acknowledge the holy standard of God, and I acknowledge my failure, my inability to stand before you with worthy praise, for I have been reminded your standard is righteousness and truth, your standard is holiness and perfection, and in both the broad strokes of the Ten Commandments, and in all the little details that we heard, both in our Leviticus reading and even through Jesus as he continues his Sermon on the Mount, I have failed. I have flopped. I have strayed. I have sinned. In ways that are big and small, just like last week, I have stepped off the path 
that is to prosperity in life, and I have started walking that path that leads to destruction and to death. The standard that Jesus raised last week when we heard it, why didn't kill anybody this week? Uh-huh. And what about the hate in your heart? You didn't commit adultery. But what about the desire in your heart? That the Lord who made you inside and out wants all of you inside and out to honor and to glorify Him. Yes, our actions, but also our spirits, our thoughts, our hearts, our emotions, our desires, that all of it, all of us, ought to reflect his honor, his praise, ought to meet his holy standard. So the full service, the fuller liturgy, actually begins with acknowledgement of God's holy standard. This penitential order then says, and I know that I have failed. Lord, forgive me. Absolve me and renew me. The penitential order starts with the Decalogue and it moves right to the confession of sin. <coughs> then you get absolved. For the Lord is merciful, and he forgives the repentant and renews them with his spirit. Then and only then do you stand in praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We start in humility. We seek his forgiveness. We receive his mercy. And we stand worthily before him to offer holy praise to a holy God. That's how it ought to be. Even if our service doesn't reflect it, our hearts, our attitudes, our commitments can. Every Sunday, every day. I mean, we screw up all the time. We mess things up. We we let each other down, or we, we hurt one another, we, we do something wrong, or we don't do the right thing. And when I do that, I've done something to you, I've kind of messed it up, or I stepped on your toes, or I did something that has offended you, and I look at you and say, I'm sorry, and you say, It's not rhetorical. <laughs> Help me with my point here. I'm sorry, and you say, It's okay. Oh, it's okay. Except it's not okay. <coughs> if we are talking about a holy God who is perfect, righteous, right, and good, and we sin, and we stray, and we break in the broad strokes, in the details, not just the holy standard of God, but our very spirits, we step on that path that leads to destruction and to death. It doesn't matter how little or how big. Remember, Jesus is saying the same path that starts with hate for your brother leads you to his murder. The same path that starts with the lust of your eyes leads to the adultery of your body. And that path takes you away from the holy presence of God, whether with one step or a thousand. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This is where we acknowledge it's not okay. I'm not okay. God doesn't say, yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, you try. You're all right, buddy. Check it out. <clears throat> God is holy. <clears throat> and even our sins and failings <clears throat> that seem so minor and so small are magnified, are projected in infinite contrast when we look at 100% perfect and holy. She doesn't like you to know this, but Priscilla <laughs> has a stock of good paper. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble, so I won't tell you where it is in her office. <laughs> she keeps it secret for special occasions. But she's got a couple of reams of apparently really nice paper. And it feels better and it looks better. And I never knew the difference. 
but something would happen, like say a funeral or something where we wanted something a little bit extra nice, and she would pull out her special paper. And I had no idea, I mean, paper is paper is paper, until you look at the stuff that we use every Sunday, hey man, that's white, it looks good to me, and you put it up against her white paper. And I didn't know there was some standard of whiteness and brightness in paper, but man, you put those two, whoa. What do we use every week? Is, is, is this made of dirt? <laughs> when you see the nice paper, it's almost like you're seeing white for the first time. <clears throat> you put the normal paper, which you assume is white, that's what I know, it looks good to me. And you put it next to what's even whiter, and it stands out like a sore thumb. With a better example, with a higher standard, that which we assume is perfectly acceptable, okay, no problem, and great, turns out to be woefully lacking. We just need to apply the right standards. It's, we don't know any better if our standard is always ourselves. If our standard is always, well, I tried hard. Well, my heart's in the right place. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's okay. It's not. It's not. We fall. We fail. We sin, we turn away, we do the wrong thing, we fail to do the right thing, the broad strokes, the small details, and it happens again and again and again. It might not seem like such a big deal, it might not seem like we're all right, but not in comparison to a God who is truly holy. <coughs> that takes a bit of unpacking, then let me unpack it very briefly. Holy, in the Hebrew, kadosh. It implies wholeness. That which is clean, completely undefiled, sound, right, free from any evil whatsoever, perfection, both of quality and morality. And if we seem like white paper, you compare against that sort of holiness. And you see the dinginess. You see the discoloration in the darkness. And it becomes very stark. It becomes very clear. In the Greek, the word is typically translated hagios. Not only implies the same thing, it's actually related to a different kind of root word related to the term for awful. This is one of those fun etymological times where we can look back at the history of words and what they used to mean to say, this is one of those times where awful doesn't mean bad. Awful used to mean full of awe. awe. Yeah. Something that filled you with awe. With shock, surprise, grandeur, humility. Whoa. It's so big. It's so enormous. It's so fantastically great beyond my comprehension. Can't wrap my head around it. Can't even know what I'm about to do. Oh. Oh. Related to terrible. Related to things that are awful. Full of all. Oh. In the light of God's Holiness. No evil. Clean, undefiled. Perfect in quality, immorality, and whole. Not a piece missing, not even a tiny one. Not even deep inside. Fill us with awe. And that all would inspire humility. Our lack, our brokenness, <coughs> our bentness, in comparison to that true standard, would be so obvious. And that's just it. That God himself is our standard. Be perfect as God is perfect. Be holy as he is holy. He is our standard, how we can define or even understand the term. That God himself is Good. And when we say that, we don't mean, well, I kind of like that. 
That one, not so much. Mm, yeah, on the whole, yes. Uh, mm, yeah, God, you're good. You meet with my exacting standards. Therefore, you have my seal. It's not that at all. We say God is good because it is inherent within his character. His very nature simply is good. And any understanding we have of the concept of good is based on knowing the character of God. We have no standard in which to judge him by other than his very essence, which is holy, which is righteous. There is no ruler that we can place up next to God in order to measure him. For he is the ruler. And he is the king. He is the ruler and he is the rule. Anything that we know about goodness is in comparison to his very nature. That which he does is good for he himself is good. <clears throat> Not compared to our preferences or our likes, but simply as an expression of I am who I am, a God who is almighty, everlasting, perfect, and holy. He is the ruler. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the love. And we fall short, measured against that. Now, it will be no surprise here in church that we can talk about our own sinfulness, our wretchedness, our great need, and our great lack. And it will be no surprise in church that we should be able to acknowledge this and then talk about our ability to count on and depend on God himself. That he is merciful. He is forgiving. And through his love, we can count not on our own righteousness, but on his. That those who are repentant and will turn to him are restored, are renewed. And it's not about our attaining of perfection, but about his righteousness that would cover us over <clears throat> inside and out. And yet, that doesn't mean that there is no place for the Decalogue to be said. There is no place for us to, to, to hear the words of the details that were given, both in Leviticus and through the words of Christ. Don't cheat and rob your neighbor. Don't even hold somebody's pay overnight until the next day. Somebody smacks you upside the head, turn your face and offer the other. When people want to borrow something, give it to them. The people who hate you, love them. People who are trying to destroy you. Pray for them. It matters. It accounts. We can acknowledge this standard and acknowledge the ways in which we fail. <coughs> like the beginning of the service. We can then acknowledge his grace. And receive his renewal that we might then finally stand once again in worthy praise of a holy God. Should be not strange at all that we in the church can talk about how when Christ is your Lord, He places His Spirit within you as a deposit and a guarantee of the faith. His Spirit, which we refer to as the Holy God's own holiness inside of you, working on you, working in you, working through you, changing you inside and out, shaping you, helping you. 
coating you. Sanding off the rough edges. Growing within you godly fruit. The salvation that comes when we rely on the mercy of God and receive Christ as our Lord then follows through a lifetime of walking with Him, of having His holiness reside within us as His Spirit, bearing that good fruit, shaping us, honing us, refining us. Jesus says, follow me, and we follow. We don't remain where we were. But we might speak words not just of salvation, but of sanctification. Be holy as God is holy. This is how He's making us holy. First and foremost, through His holiness that covers us. But secondly, through our lifetime, shaping us to be more like Him. Less of us, more of Him. That He changes us from the inside out, the longer and the deeper we walk with Him. And that we might become more holy, more like Jesus, in our actions, in our thoughts, in our will. The sanctification is that process in which God uses His Holy Spirit within us to make us more like Him. And how is He? He is holy. He is perfect. And it is that process, day by day by day, where we can acknowledge, just like saying the Decalogue before the service, this is your holy standard, and I have failed it again. This is your holy standard, and I cannot do it without you. As I fail, I claim not just my failure, but your triumph. For my failure is not my end. You are. The process where you say daily, where I used to be is no longer my beginning. God himself is my beginning. The consequences of my sin or even my grave, that is not the end. God himself, he is my end. He is my beginning. He is my end. He is my alpha. He is my way. And even when I fall, he lifts me. And even when I fail, he renews me. And as I proclaim his holy standard, as I acknowledge how I have not met it, I proclaim and I acknowledge by His grace, through His love. He is holy when I am not, and He is making me more like Him. And every day, and every moment, a new start, and a new chance that His holiness <coughs> might shine in us and through us. And as we acknowledge our failure, He absolves us, He restores and redeems us, and that we might then stand rightfully, righteously, and offer a holy God worthy praise. So may the Lord our God, whose property is always to have mercy, grant us, even now, once again, day by day, His grace, His rest, and a brand new, fresh day. May His Holy Spirit, working in us, make us whole, as He Himself is truly whole.